Hello everybody out there on YouTube. We are the three middle-aged guys and we're bullshitting about nothing. I am the Reverend. The theme here. Gray Mouse One. Actually, we're not bullshitting about nothing in this uh in this particular video. We're gonna continue on our conversation that we started in a previous video about <laughs> classic cartoons and our our objections to the shit that's being offered to kids today. Yeah. As current cartoons. Um <laughs> Unlike the previous video, I'm going to try to keep this one a little bit more focused. Um, all right, guys. Here's a question for everybody. What is the first cartoon that really kind of got you hooked on to the idea or really got you into that idea where, where it was like, fuck, these things, I don't know what they are. They're, they're cartoons. I like them. And they happen at a specific time of day. I'm going to be right there to fucking be to, – to watch them. What is like – Mom and Jerry, for you, theme. What about you, Gray Mouse? I have to go with uh, Form Blazing Sword Voltron. I would have to go a little bit earlier than that with uh, with Popeye. You know? Woo, a little earlier. You're yeah, talking about. Little, the thing yeah. about it is, as far as I remember, Tom and Jerry is the first cartoon I've ever seen. And I used to watch that, and I used to be dying in front of my damn TV. Like, man, oh man. Everything spoke to me. Not just the music that they were playing, but everything that was going on from facial expression to a freaking bulldog warning Cat about doing something and then Mouse would just try to get Cat in trouble. Everything. All of that was just well-structured to me because everything that was going on, I could completely understand. It's... You know, as a two-year-old, I'm watching and I'm just like, this is just freaking brilliant. I think one of my favorite Tom and Jerry cartoon episodes one of your is the uh, is the serenade one. Ain't <laughs> my baby. I mean, that stands out to me. And I understand what Jerry was going through. I really did. And I understand what Tom was trying to do. But... Well. But at the point when, after all the running around and whatnot, and Tom grabbed the bulldog, is talking about, I see uh, flames and fire, and uh, you know, <laughs> and then after it, he realizes it's the bulldog, and he just throws the bulldog on the ground. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, it was before that, <laughs> the part that had me dying the most is when Tom ran behind a gate and lifted a brick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the bulldog turns the corner and he looked. The look he had on the his face when he saw the brick up there, like, whoa, he's about <laughs> to fuck me up. It was the way he stopped and he looked at the brick like, God damn, if I go over there, he's going to slam this thing. He's going to kill me with that thing. <laughs> you know, what's funny is that, uh, like I said, one of my earliest uh, – memories was of Popeye and I you know there's a whole thing with like eating your spinach and everything else and all that but I one of the things that I distinctly remember this will probably kind of set the stage of what where, where my mindset has been as well majority of my life and everything right was that I remember like the first time I saw Popeye actively trying to run away from an opponent right it wasn't Bluto it was Alice the Goon and uh, because Alice the Goon had a, a crush on Popeye. And in this particular uh, episode, I remember uh, <laughs> it was Olive Oil who actually downed the, downed the spinach. spinach and knocks the crap out of, uh, out of Alice the Goon. But I remember he's running away from this chick, right? Now, granted, <laughs> you know, I'm a little kid and everything. But the first thing in my mind that I could, I could think as a little kid was like, He's got a girl running after her. What's so bad about that? <laughs> and this is before I, I even hit double digits or I was even in grade school. But, yeah, this kind of frames where, I, where my focus was at. Like I said in previous videos, you know, this is before video games. So the only thing I was thinking about was, like, getting into pants with, with, with like, you know, with, with the opposite sex. But, um, yeah, you know. <laughs> From there, there were other things that that came up, like um, like I mentioned before, Battle of the Planets, G Force, um, 
The problem with that particular cartoon was that it was only shown literally at like six o'clock in the fucking morning. Uh, All right. And when I started thinking about some cartoon, it was like, you know, I mean, you sit there, you expect kids to be up at a certain time to go ahead and get ready. Well, back in the day, kids would get up on their own. Okay. And it really wasn't to get ready. It was so that they could sit there and watch their early morning cartoons before they were even while they were eating breakfast or before they were eating breakfast to go ahead and get ready to go to cereal, fruit loops and sit there. Eat yeah. Pepper. Yep. Big bowl of cereal, fruity pebbles, corn pops, whatever it was, frosty flakes, whatever it was, you had a bowl of it. <laughs> Watch a cartoon. Yeah. I mean, you know, and there, there were, there are things like that. I mean, they're really, really early, early memories. I know as far as, as far as it went, I, I think I first started realizing like the differences between cartoons around the time 1984 when Voltron came along. Okay. Because up until that point, the only thing that I had seen anything similar was many, many, many years ago with Battle of Planets and G-Force. And then in the, in the interim, you know, the time in between, we had your Looney Tunes and stuff that was offered by Warner Brothers. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff that was offered by uh, Walter Lance with like uh, Woody Woodpecker and other things. Um, Michael and Jekyll. God damn, where did those guys go? Really? Yes. Uh, that, that was one of the things that kind of filled in the gap between like the late 70s into the mid 80s for me. Um, Droopy. What's up? Droopy. Yeah, Droopy. Who was... He was all, he was all one little Walter Lance and you know part of Woody oh. Woodpecker and, uh, and and Tom and Jerry and other things. There were there were other things and that was in there. And then you know like around the first time that I, I had noticed that there was like actual different styles of animation and cartoons was with Voltron, where it was like this looks really really different. Mm-hmm. There's a, a different style to not just the way that it's drawn, but also the way that the story is told. And damn it, you know, the, the, first, the first fucking episode, they're sitting there, they're walking around, they're like, oh, the Roby slammed down. I was thinking to myself, well, all they're going to do is they're going to kick down a few village buildings. You know, up until that point, I had, there really wasn't anything, anything out of place as far as like cartoon violence, right? And, you know, Roby is, is, is making its way to the castle, kicking down houses and things. You know, people are running away. Robies looks down, reaches down, grabs a person and pops him in the mouth. And I was like, oh, he fucking ate him. You know what, though? The thing is, though, if you watch Voltron, the 80s version, and you actually sit there and watch it nowadays, it doesn't really hold up to where it was back when you were a child. Yeah, yeah. However, yeah, we'll talk about that. Defender, watch that. That's all I gotta say. Well, okay. we see Legendary Defender pays homage to the '80s. Yeah, series. And, and I, but I, I I think, in Voltron's defense, Voltron does hold up compared to other things. Well, compared one thing, to a lot of things from the time. Yes, you were talking agree. about what cartoon, uh, Reverend. You're talking about the cartoon that really um, influenced you. Um, I'll have to say Transformers. I thought that was the neatest thing that you have these robots in the skies that can. You got these semis that turn into robots, big ass robots. You got these airplanes that could turn into these robots. You got a fucking robot that could turn into a gun. You know, you got, all these, you got a robot that could turn into a cassette player. And you got these cassettes, eject, eject, eject coming out. Oh. I mean, I was sitting there as a kid. I was like, oh, oh okay. Look. I love Transformers, but let's cut through the crap cake here. When you finally recognize the composition of these robots turning into small or bigger things, you're like, wait a minute. You, because I'm going to ask, where the fuck did Optimus Prime's trailer go when he transforms? Everybody where asked from? What did Nobody it knew. And nobody knew. How did, how did Soundwave spit in Spike's pocket? How did... Look. I mean, I you, got, you, got these tra- but Look, you got these triple changers, like broadside, that turn into aircraft carrier, robot, and I forgot his other, uh, its wing turns into a, a freaking tank, robot, and an airplane. 
I mean, as a kid, Astro Train was in marketing. The Astro Train. The, the the beauty of it is that Astro the Train was in the cartoon was exactly how you had to transform them. In, in, in. And, I mean, look. Let, 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 let me just say this: How many people in this room here actually try to transform their fucking toy as fast as it happens on the screen? I'm like, I got it this time. Fuck. <laughs> Wait a minute. I used to have a row of Transformers watching. It was kind of difficult within five minutes trying to interchange everything because I had Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain. I had Transformers. I had G.I. Joes. I, my Voltron was always on deck. He was just there with the blazing sword and all. And I would, I would used to try to form the lions as they were doing it on the fucking cartoon. <laughs> have them in a row. Four feet and legs. Hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> I mean, it was just amazing to see. I, I did all of that. Seriously. Like, like when they first formed Devastator, and I was like, I was hooked. You, you got these damn Constructicons, six robots that formed this one big robot. I was like, oh, my <laughs> mind blown. And, and then, you know, I mean, you got Thundercats. And, I mean, and, and you see, even in the Silverhawks, I used to have Silver them, Hawks. and I used to launch them. <laughs> I, I used to do all of that, man. I, I mean, G.I. Joe. I sat there and I watched G.I. Joe. Wait, wait, wait. Here's another thing about 80s cartoons, especially the ones that we're naming. Either the plot was named yep. as far as – or it was described in the theme song while the cartoon was coming on. Yep. It, it, okay. Transformers, robots in the skies. It described it. It Autobots waging battle to destroy the evil forces of Decepticons. Okay, that's all you need to fucking know. G.I. Joe, for example, against the terrorist Cobra. I, I think I think in general though, if you think about like programming from you know back in the day to now, I mean most shows, most primetime shows now don't even have theme songs. Right. It's literally like a cold opening right into this scenario where it's going to be like boom, 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 well, where a lot of the, the programming is, is pretty much catered to like, hey, these folks that are watching this have less than a 15-second fucking attention span. If you don't get them into, into whatever is going on as quickly as fucking possible, they'll change the channel. Now, that's true to an extent, but... I I really really miss you know not just with cartoons but with programming in general that there's 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 no theme song no j jingle anymore nothing that you yeah. can sit there and you know walk down the street like you know the only thing that I could think of and people aren't gonna fucking be able to to recognize it that has anything close to a theme song for something that's that's opening up it might be I don't know Law and Order. But who the fuck is going to be seeing that? Well, you know what, though? I mean, for, for us, for us, right? Yeah. I mean, I could sit here and I could start a song, you know, I, I can start a theme song and you'll instantly know what that cartoon is. I mean, all you got to do is do the Inspector Gadget. I mean, everybody knows that. You know, Transformers, everybody knows that. I remember in elementary everybody school. Everybody knows that. I remember in elementary school, we actually did that in um, school. How um, it was it was it was four of us that did it, but it was hilarious how it all started. One of the guys started it, then another guy did the same thing. I jumped in and I said, dun, 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 dun. "Now at this time, everybody's looking at everybody like, where's this coming from?" So when it got to the point where we started actually singing it. Because the fourth guy said, doo, 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 and then we all started beating on our desk. Doo, 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 Inspector Gadget. Doo, 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 doo. Now the whole classroom did the whistle. The whole classroom did it. And our teacher, he was just like, you know what? That was so cool. I'm going to let that go. <laughs> and then he was like, no, wait a minute. Who? Whose idea was that? <laughs> we pointed at each other. It's like, hey, it was your idea. You started it. It was just hilarious because everybody knew the cartoon. Everybody knew the theme song. 
and nobody could be like, oh, that, that theme song is lame. That, oh, that cartoon is boring. No. You watched it. I mean, Gadget didn't solve one fucking crime. He always thought his fucking dog was a fucking mad agent. <laughs> I've always said this, and, I, and I'll say it again, is that no matter how stupid Inspector Gadget was, he knew not the, that the, the, uh, the damn uh, the coding. You know what I mean? The 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 mission. Because <laughs> always, you know, oh, he always. Well, yeah. You know, Vestige was selfish. Chief, poor Chief Quimby. <laughs> he always blew up. I mean, it just like some of those theme songs are so iconic. That's Cinema. another thing too. When you have okay things like Gadget or even things like Heathcliff or even okay Thundercats is notorious for this. Everybody had a theme song on Thundercats. Or a specific moment would happen, and they would have a certain song playing. Mm -hmm. So soundtrack was very important to a lot of cartoons out there. Uh, that's one of the things that I think, like I said, you know, as far as our attention, our ADHD uh, riddled, um, you know, masses of the generations that we have that they're catering to now that just kind of fell by the wayside. Um, one of the things that I did see coming up through the 80s and 90s that did look hopeful for a moment, for a moment, was that a, there were actually a few cartoons and a few shows that came up that had some sense of overarching continuity. Um, like, like we had mentioned earlier, Batman, the animated series. Great really long projected overarching continuity. In fact, it continued all the way into the freaking Justice League and beyond. Uh, yeah. All the way into Batman Beyond, in fact. Um, you know, like uh, Gargoyles. Overarching long-term freaking continuity. Up until that point, everything was very, very short form and episodic, and there was a lot of canned animation. Shit that they had, they had went ahead and they would pre-record with so that they can get away with not paying animators and not paying voice actors <laughs> and shit like that because they had it all all pre-recorded and all pre-done and hey look oh we got the canned animation sequence there's Voltron forming again we got this canned animation sequence there are the Transformers transforming again you know yeah. and uh, here's a canned animation sequence Lionel's pulling out that motherfucking sword it was just but thankfully a lot of that stuff started going to the wayside um i love a cartoon called bionic six <laughs> a lot of canned animation in that one yes it was <laughs> yeah. but the I mean, thing about it is it this it, again it, everything was described in the theme song when it came on well you know i i'm probably gonna get get killed for this one but uh captain planet i mean how many times do they have to recycle animation on that one yeah. i mean seriously i mean and even the dinosaurs yeah. i mean come on <laughs> denver the last dinosaur <sighs> widget the world watcher those lame cartoons but at least they had some substance to they it. they tried okay they tried, they tried. um the 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 thing that i i think was most unforgivable about Thundar, um, the barbarian yeah i think the the thing that was most unforgivable about most of the um most of the older cartoons was that there were a lot of them that seemed to have like some sort of uh long-standing continuity or story arc that just disappeared gone yeah. dungeons and dragons we mentioned earlier oh. before another good one water theme is another good one you know? another good one is uh I'm sorry, what did you say? Yeah, Pirates of Dark Water, man. That that pissed me. Because the thing about it is, I hate it. One thing I hated, 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 is you'll be watching your lineup of cartoons, and next thing you know, it's fucking, it's interrupted by the wide world of sports. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite cartoon is about to come on, and next thing you know, they're about to show some fucking golf. Fuck. One thing too is about continuity is uh, Scooby Doo. Uh, that has continuity. Huh? 
What'd you say? Scooby Doo has continuity to it. <laughs> well, there is one. Nine out of ten times, the case is easily solved. Simply, that's the first person that they meet is the person that's doing all the villainry. One thing about Scooby Doo that I gotta give credit is the. I'm talking about old character. school Scooby Doo, man. I'm talking about like the '70s Scooby Doo. That's yeah. what I'm saying. The superstars that they had on the show. Oh yeah. They've had Don Knotts. They had the Globe Trotters. They've even had Batman and Robin. Yep. 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 <laughs> on Scooby, Phyllis Diller's been on Scooby Doo. They've had actual people guest star on Scooby Doo. They yep. definitely had Adam West. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. But, I mean, <laughs> it's just it, it, it's really sad that. You know, what we've done for the last video and this part of the video is that we named certain video, uh, certain um, cartoons that have influenced us throughout the years and come to a point where it reached pinnacle, you know, mid 90s. Then all of a sudden, you know, like Reverend said, the FCC got involved and all that shit. And it's, you, can, you can tell, you can see when the FFC got involved. And there's, mean, there's some it's very literally the draw a line. Yeah. A, a, a pie chart or a fucking bar graph and you could tell exactly when the FFC got involved and it's been shit ever since. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing about the, the FCC, um, the Federal Communications Commission is that the it wasn't so much that they went ahead and applied all of this legislation and regulations to everybody, but at the end of the at the end of the nineties toward the turn of the century they were very, they were fine happy. They were finding people left and right. Yeah. One, of the, one of the biggest fines was a $24 million fine that they lev levied on Univision for a, a show called, um, let's see here, it was called Complices el Rescate, which uh, translates roughly into Friends to the Rescue. And their whole thing was like, you guys are saying that this is uh, education an educational show, but all it is is basically the Spanish version of the parent trap. And it was like, they were like, you're not fulfilling that 20% quota of educational, uh, educational requirement. And they find them 24 million for that. They find Pokemon, they find Yu-Gi-Oh because they were like, Oh, all these things are, are episode long commercials for, for fucking games and, and products, you know, not to mention the fact that, You've had other other programs out there like the fucking Teletubbies, or fucking, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, the dinosaur. What's his name? Barney, the fucking purple dinosaur. Ah, no. All right, where all they yeah, were yeah. for, yeah, you know, all they were for for a lot of them was you know marketing tools to sit there and get their parents to fucking buy this bullshit fucking merchandise for their kids. You know, uh, it's. Look, we understand there are kids, there's a demographic that you're going for. It doesn't matter if it's sports, if it's news, or if it's, or if it's uh, children's programming or something like that. We understand that you're going to be actively marketing and advertising certain things to these people. And advertisers are going to jump on and they're going to they're gonna want to go ahead and grab onto that. Um, so why the hell are you going to sit there and say, Oh, well, you got a video game called Pokemon. We're going to find you $5 million for, for having Mon show up on a fucking Game Boy fucking commercial that That's isn't ridiculous. even attached to the fucking, fucking cartoon. Or, oh, we're going to find Yu-Gi-Oh! like $10 million for, for, for going ahead and, and advertising, you know, running a commercial that advertises the Yu-Gi-Oh! fucking card game during the oh. fucking show. Look, <laughs> look. Uh, Warner Brothers did it great with Animaniacs and Tiny Toon Adventures. I mean, those two cartoons were at the pinnacle of the FCC, F, F, uh, FCC starting to crack down. And they're like, so Animaniacs was like, okay, fine. We'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll educate the kids as, you, you know, as, uh, as the cartoon moves on. And it was, it was actually... You, you are learning, and you're not realizing you're learning. No. I mean, how many people, just like the White Girls World, United States, Canada, Panama, Jamaica, Haiti, Peru, you're sitting there. When I, look, let me tell you a real quick story. 
I was sitting in geography. Everybody took geography. That was a required thing to get through high school. So I was sitting there, and my uh, geography teacher gave us a map because we had to do the the um, the map, the, the country of the world. So I was sitting there at my desk, and I was going, United States, Canada, Panama, Jamaica, Haiti, Peru, you know, like that. And everybody was looking at me like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Was like, and then the teacher was like, wow. How did you, you know, they didn't know that he didn't know about the Animaniacs. I mean, yes, it was educational, just like Yakos or uh, not Yakos. What? Who was it? Yakos uh, states. You know, they had that song about the states and the capitals. And the reason why they put that into the cartoons was directly because of the FCC that well, required them to have education in their cartoons. There was also another caveat to that with those particular co- cartoons because they're really kind of the exception to the rule is that at the time that Warner Brothers was was setting everything up, like I said, they had the backing of somebody big in Hollywood, Steven Spielberg going ahead and pushing mm-hmm. production money. Not only that, but the studio heads at Warner Brothers, not only at Warner Brothers, but also at Fox at the time, sat there and told told the the guys who were making the show, hey, look, we know this is kind of an odd, out of the way thing. Just make it as best you can. And they weren't laden with the constant focus groups or having to talk about, oh, we have the anti bullying people to talk about. We have this, <laughs> this education commission to talk about. We have this uh, commercial lawyers to talk about. And, and having to sit there and meet all those things. I mean, if you remember the Fox TV lineup that included Animaniacs, the X Men. Oh yeah! Batman the animated series and the fucking Power Rangers. There is a whole generation of kids who remember fondly that two fucking hours that started at three yeah. o'clock when you arrived home from school or when you ran your ass home from school. Yeah, oh, wow. you know. Forgot, yeah, that's another thing we forgot about. Certain like Spider Man, X Men. You guys are gonna probably kill me for this one. Here come the littles. But I mean, the the thing about that is that the Rugrats. What are you, you talking know, about? Well, the Rugrats is 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 attached to to Nickelodeon and cable. Well, I'm just saying, it's the Rugrats Rugrat cartoon. Yeah, the which is which has its own exceptions to like what the FCC was going on. But to think that there was this whole block of fucking of shows just for kids well, that wasn't pandering to the fact that these were little fucking kids watching well, them. They were also yeah. smart enough for adults to fucking watch. Yeah, exactly. It was goddamn incredible to consider. Well, I mean, it's look, look, at to consider now. look at the Disney afternoon. I mean, they had DuckTales, Tailspin, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, uh, what do you call it? Darkwing Duck, Tailspin. Okay. Gargoyles. That, that brings Gargoyles. You know, with the short time that we have left, that brings me up to a different, uh, a related <laughs> but different topic. Cartoon remakes. <coughs> because we, well, a few videos ago, we went ahead and we did our review on Voltron Legendary Defender, a remake of the original Voltron, or at least the Lion Force Voltron, that DreamWorks and Netflix went ahead and put out. Yes. It was announced just recently that Disney is going to go ahead and do a remake of The Lion King. Yes. <laughs> In the vein of the Jungle Book. The only thing that I can sit there and say is that, look, Jeremy Irons and James Earl Jones are still alive. Get those motherfuckers under lock and key and do that. Look, the Jungle Book, I was told, I just that. In fact, I watched it over at the Reverend's house and I was dumbfounded. I thought it was one of the greatest. I was like, that is how you do a remake. That's yeah. that just plain and simple. It was spot on. To, no. to today's, and I was like, yes. And then I just recently read that Lion King. I was like, get James Earl Jones in there. Yes, do it right. No. What do you think about it, theme? Uh, thinking about other cartoons like Plastic Man. <laughs> What about snorkels? Even the pound, even pound puppies had a cartoon. Oh my god! What? What? Wait, what were those things called? Pound puppies? 
inch high private eye. Oh my God. <laughs> what do you call private eyes? Dicks. Inch high dick. What about uh, what about the pound puppies cartoon? Ah. I'm just saying. I mean, Teddy oh, Ruskin. Oh, Teddy Ruskin had yeah. a fucking cartoon. Teddy yeah. Ruskin. Wait, 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 wait. What? They had a cartoon. It had a cartoon. Teddy Ruskin had a tar cartoon. You know, uh, there, there's there's a horrible there's a horrible drawback to sitting there and going back over this nostalgic stuff, and uh, part of that oh. is this. I have now got the Monchichi fucking theme song no! stuck in my head. Oh, no, 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 no. Shirt tails. What? Give me the shirt tails. <laughs> yes. Give me the motherfucking shirt tails any fucking day. <laughs> Damn it. Fuck you guys. I love shirt tails. I, I've just got this song stuck in my head. It's exactly. fucking horrible. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Shirt to the tails. It's like, okay. All right, fine. Challenge of the Super Friends. <laughs> oh. Aquaman flying in on riding two flights. Yeah. <laughs> fucking seahorse. <laughs> you know what? I'll even say SpongeBob SquarePants. I mean, if you if you really watch that cartoon, it's not really a cartoon aimed at kids. If you really watch that, it has a lot of silver lining adults. But, but that goes on the contrast of Nickelodeon. Correct. And that was <sighs> SpongeBob can't carry the fucking litter box of fucking Stimpy. I was gonna say Ren and Stimpy. I was gonna say Ren and Stimpy. No, no. Ren Ren and Stimpy. Yes. (laughs) Two stupid dogs. (laughs) Two stupid dogs. The cartoon name was Two Stupid Dogs. (sighs) My lord. Some people like (laughs) Doug. Wait, which version? Nick or Disney's? I don't know. (laughs) Yes. Disney bought that shit, and next thing you know, they called it Disney's Doug, and it sucked. Then I'm talking about the original Doug. Okay. <laughs> Doug Funny? All right. That had substance, but Disney's Doug, oh, my God, they ruined it. Uh, there's there's other things that have gotten ruined, uh, you know, especially recently. Uh, one of my favorite cartoons uh, ever, ever, is the Powerpuff Girls. In fact, I've been running around with a little, little Mojo Jojo figure hanging from Mojo Jojo. Jojo. ever since 1998 hey. on my keychain. Okay. All I gotta say is this: him. Yeah. Well, him. well no, I, I, I know. Oh, about, he doesn't even have a name. His name is him. I know about Mojo. <laughs> I know about him, but you know the thing about Mojo Jojo is that I think he's he's probably one of the best. Cartoon villains, not the best, but one of one of, yeah. Um, I like now, Mad Dark. I'm sorry, dude. Ha, now, ha, ha, now, ha, 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 ha. Well, here's the thing about Mandark. He doesn't have to, to worry about being remade into a fucking uh, show of his former fucking self. They can't. It's no, they of, can't remake those. That Johnny Bravo. No, they're not going to touch those. I mean, what, what what the Reverend is saying is that the they Powerpuff molested Powerpuff the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, is what they, what happened? That. Okay, and the, the silly thing about it is that, okay, we've mentioned cartoons or, or, or anime coming in from, from outside of America, okay? When, it, when, when other countries take our shit and adapt it, it can be just as ugly as if we take their stuff and adapt it. Because if you've <laughs> ever sat down and watched the anime, any anime episodes of Powerpuff Girls Z, yeah, god awful. Well, God off. Look, look speaking of villains, I have to say Aku is up there too, man. What is, 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 Samurai, Jack, is Samurai Jack back? Not, not, not yet. I know the project's uh, projects yeah. been in the making, but he hasn't come back officially just yet. In Can't fact, that's probably that. something that we could sit there and Google up, you know, at oh, our yeah. Definitely you know? yeah, definitely seeing that. Yeah. I mean, oh, come oh, on, man, Aku. Yeah. <laughs> 
Aku is great. You know, it's just kind of hard. To, they're going to have to find somebody with a, a suitable voice. Unfortunately, the voice actor died. Yeah, Mako uh, is, uh, is no longer around. You know, yeah. and, you know, before we go ahead and spill into a part three of this, really, this is this is one of the types of things that we we have to revisit this. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure we will. But for this particular video, we're gonna have to go ahead and end it at this time. So if you're so kind, hit the subscribe button, hit like, leave us a comment below. We are the middle-aged guys, and we've been bullshitting about cartoons for the last 40 minutes. I am the Reverend. The theme here. Gray Mouse One. Oh god. Captain in the game master. It's all about it's all about mother brain. <laughs> no, no, no. Time in Belmont. No. <laughs> the Game Boy. Didn't Big Doug have a cartoon at one point? Go ahead and close this out, theme. <laughs> Reds.